Hello, everyone, and welcome to Professional Big Time Wrestling. Great to have you with us wherever you are. I'm Chuck Allen with you at ringside, and uh, all of the action will get underway momentarily, as you can see in the ring right now, from Sydney, Australia, with a combined weight of 486 pounds. Bob Hefner and Al Costello, the fabulous kangaroos. And their opponents from Ann Arbor, weighing 218 pounds, Sam Shell. His tag team partner from West Virginia, weighing 230 pounds, John Ruffin. And your referee, Al Thomas, the popular Pontiac school teacher in Michigan. And we'll wait for his signal for the uh, Bell's reaction. And we'll get our first event here on professional big time wrestling underway. And now the fabulous kangaroos will go through their ritual. They had a very long uh, ritual last time we saw them. This time they keep it short. Maybe the referee asked them to do that before it got underway. And now we get the bell. An action underway here on professional big time wrestling. Anytime you get the fabulous kangaroos in there, you're going to have action. Action, action, action. Bob Hefner takes the first call against Sam Shell. One thing you'll notice about the fabulous kangaroos, they tag in and out very quickly. Do a super job, keep themselves rested. They could go for an hour duration match if they had to with no problem. Sam Shell, John Ruffin have not worked in tag competition that much together. We will wait and see how they work. Beautiful neck takedown by Bob Hefner who's certainly getting a lot of wrestling information from the pro veteran Al Costello, who wrote a book, 1001 Wrestling Holds. He is the master, he knows them. And Bob Hefner is learning well. Beautiful side face lock by Hefner. Sam Shell, just 218 pounds, picks Hefner up, but Hefner hangs on. Squeezing that head with that big arm. In fact, he's asking the referee, Al, Cus Al uh, Thomas, if uh, Sam would like to break that hold and give up. He may leave the ring with a headache. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the next hour, we've got a tremendous program for you. You're going to see the Sheik, the wild man from Syria in that ring against El Brasario. This will be a match that was videotaped earlier and will be shown to you on this telecast. Also, Am Pro Wrestling, an exciting event for you here on Professional Big Time Wrestling. You also see such stars as Bulldog John Kent, Stan the Man Stasiak, Mark Lewin. Great program for the next hour. Don't go away. Twisting the arm of Al Costello by young John Ruffin. Nice takedown by Costello. Ruffin also makes a nice recovery. Twisting that arm, tag is made. Hefner will come back in. Beautiful arm drop. Twists that arm, also about the wrist. Ruffin uses the butt of his hand to put up against the chin. The crowd like that one. Oh, beautiful elbow to the top of the head. Hefner, a little bit of problem now. Al Costello goes over to say something quickly. Probably, let's have a tag. Nice move by John Ruffin. Been in professional wrestling about three years, doing a super admirable job. Look at this, could be one. The referee does not count because Al Costello comes in and interferes. Well, that's what the rule book says, that the referee will not count if another opponent in tag team competition is in the ring. But had he counted Costello not come into the ring, we could have had an upset. the turnbuckles. Mighty smashed by Hefner. Now getting back at John Ruffin for the punches that he perpetrated upon the chest. 
Oh, John Ruffin giving it to Hefner. Beautiful body slam by Ruffin. 230 pounder. Elbow drop to the chest. Couldn't cover again. Al Costello comes in. Tag was made. Shell in there now against Hefner. Another tag made. Hefner must come out. Nice leg takedown by Al Costello. Got the arm stretch. Puts a fist into the stomach. Puts uh, Shell back on the canvas. Beautiful roll up by Shell. Back into a leg lock. Professional big time wrestling and its best coming your way, fans. If you just joined us, we've only been on about three or four minutes. Call a friend. Beautiful arm twist by Bob Hefner on Sam Shell. A lot of picture taking today in the studio. If you see a flash, uh, it's not the fault of your receiver. Beautiful drop kick by Shell on Hefner. He may be little, but he moves around that ring, doesn't he? Arm drag right into the turnbuckle. Sam Shell threw him over the, by the side of uh, Ruffin as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to remind you that if you would like to see professional wrestling come into your town for any club, civic group, organization, or what have you, you can do so by contacting Pat O'Connor at area code 517-655-2218. That's 517-655-2218. If you'd like to see professional wrestling come to your town, any civic group, club, organization can do so by contacting Pat. If you're in Canada, it's 514-799-3210. Jot those numbers down. Get a hold of Pat O'Connor during the daytime hours, anywhere from 8.30 to 5. And uh, Pat O'Connor will be glad to answer any questions that you might have concerning bringing these professional wrestling stars to your town for a civic club organization to make some extra money. Hefner is asking the assistance of Costello. However, Al Thomas, the referee, advises Costello not to come into that ring. Hefner taking the brunt of the punishment now from John Ruffin, but he got a little mixing up with uh, Sam Shell as well. Pushing on those legs. And now Ruffin lets him up. Full Nelson by Hefner. Throws Ruffin's head into the top turnbuckle. It's padded, but it still hurts. End of the midsection with a fist by Al Costello. John Ruffin getting roughed up right now at the hands of the veteran Al Costello. Tag was made. Ruffin, uh, rather, uh, Hefner in now. Costello comes back out. Referee says uh, John had his foot underneath the ring. Rope, therefore, it must be broken. Not completely, however. Body slam by Hefner on Ruffin. We get a count of two. Ruffin did not want to tag, though Shell was ready to come in, coming off with a beautiful elbow smash to the chest. Look at Shell, he picks Hefner up, body slams him. About a 40 pound difference in weight there, but Sam Shell made that look easy. Fist into the midsection.
twists that arm, turns him into the ropes, brings up the knee. Shell is in trouble. Tag is made, Costello comes in. Hefner will come out. A boomerang right into an elbow smashed by Hefner. And now Costello throws Sam Shell outside of the ring onto the cement floor here of our studio. John Ruffin comes around to walk his tag team partner back around the perimeter of this ring. Give Shell a little breather. Shell must get back into the ring. If he wants to tag, he could go over and get it. Front face lock by Al Costello. Takes him down with an arm drag. Costello moves in that ring for the veteran that he is. Look out, the big boot right into the head of Shell. Another knee lift by Hefner. Tag is made now, Al Costello comes back in this tag team action. The fabulous kangaroos here on professional big time wrestling. The boomerang, the fist by Hefner on the outside of the ropes. Tag is made now, but Al Costello will hold Shell. Knee into the midsection. It looks like Shell is just about out. The other boomerang up and over the top and look out, it could be all over. Here comes Hefner, puts that elbow smash to the body. He covers his man, we'll get a count, one, two, Three, it's a count of three, and it's all over, ladies and gentlemen, here on Professional Big Time Wrestling. The fabulous kangaroos win another one. They do their Australian cry, the kangaroo cry. Shows victory. Bob Hefner, Al Costello, the fabulous kangaroos get another one here on tag team competition on Professional Big Time Wrestling. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, more wrestling coming your way. We have Bulldog Don Kent coming up against John Irish. Don't miss that event. The Sheik a little bit later on with a videotape that was recorded earlier. We'll be back after this. Get underway from Atlanta. Weighing 285 pounds, John Irish. And his opponent from Indianapolis, Indiana, weighing 243 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, Bulldog Don Kent, along with his manager, pretty boy Floyd Creechman. Floyd Creechman always exhibits pandemonium when he comes into that ring from the crowd. Now the jackets come off. We'll wait for Al Thomas, the referee, to give us the cue for the bell. We'll get action underway here on Professional Big Time Wrestling. Pretty Boy Floyd will have to exit the ring, however, before we get action underway. I don't believe Al Thomas will allow him to be in there. Now he makes a few comments to his man, Bulldog Don Kent. Crowd would like to have some action. And I don't know what the delay is uh, in the ring, but uh, we're, 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 we're waiting for Al Thomas to uh, ask for the bell. Now he asks for it. We get it underway. Now he'll tell Pretty Boy Floyd to get out of that ring. Bulldog Don Ken against John Irish from Atlanta, 285 pounds. Right into an arm lock by Irish. Pretty boy Floyd Creechman standing at ringside. We'll have a few choice words to say. Right now he's very happy with what the Bulldog is doing in there against John Irish. That was a fist right to the forehead or right to the jaw rather of uh, John Irish. Now he's back in his football days. That's the way you take out a tackle or a guard. A 
see what Ken is going for now, holding on to that front face lock on John Irish. Back up against the turnbuckles. Look out. Irish wants to give him a big one right in the midsection, and he does. Puts in another one. Elbow smashing to the jaw. <clears throat> Arm drag into the turnbuckles by John Irish. Fist right to the head by Kent. Throws his head into that top turnbuckle. And now pretty boy Floyd Creechman turns around, faces the cameras and smiles. I believe at this point, Kent can do whatever he wants to do because Irish has been hurt. He could get a victory and get it very quickly. Let's see if he does that or not. Now the crowd starts their barking. Bulldog Don Kent does not like that. Normally breaks holes if it gets too loud. Now the referee asking Irish if he wants to give it up. Front face lock applied tightly by Bulldog Kent. Don't forget, fans, that the Sheik will be along a little bit later on in a videotape that was uh, telecast earlier. It'll be against El Brasero, the great Spanish star. Stan Stasiak will be on later on uh, on this telecast, along with Am Pro Wrestling. Nice to have you with us all along our professional big time wrestling network. Be here with us every week, same time, same station. Still the front face lock applied by Bulldog Don Kent. Now if it's tight enough and it's long enough, Irish could pass out. There's no way that you can hang on to a front face lock like that without causing some severe pain. Particularly with the arms that Bulldog Don Ken has. On the outside of the ring, on the apron, pretty boy Floyd Creechman giving some more advice to Bulldog Ken. Some of the advice is to squeeze it, squeeze it. Well, he's doing that. Bulldog Kent, I don't remember seeing him hang on to a front face lock this long with anyone. Now, Thomas, the referee, right down there to ensure that if Irish wants to give up, call it quits. He'll ring the bell, the victory will go to Bulldog Kent, but Irish is hanging in there. Now Floyd says, ask him whether he wants to give it up or not. The crowd here in the audience is uh, being a little quiet. It's a little different style of wrestling for Bulldog Don Kent. They're used to him uh, moving around that ring a lot. But he's hanging onto a front face lock and doesn't want to give up on it. Now Irish, surprisingly enough, is trying to get to his feet. Obviously enough strength left in his body to do that. He's a big man, 285 pounder from Atlanta, Georgia. Beautiful city in Atlanta. Oh, brutal punch to the chest by Kent. Is another one. Irish has a lot of stamina to be able to get back on his feet like that from that front face lock applied by Bulldog Don Kent. Side headlock now applied, and he hangs on, trying to push the chin of Kent back. Punch into the midsection. They certainly have to be weakened, but their punches at that. Big knee lift to the jaw. And now Kent uses him as a punching bag. Picks him up. 
Al Thomas is saying keep him back away from the turnbuckles. A few kidney chops there. I'm amazed at the punishment that John Irish is taking at the hands of Bulldog Don Cannon continues to wrestle and is able to get back on his feet. Kent still hangs on to that headlock. Pretty boy Floyd getting down now, walking back on the floor. Saying a few words to uh, Bulldog Kent. Now Floyd having a few words to say to the referee. Also, ladies and gentlemen, on this telecast, Mark Lewin will be on board. The great Mark Lewin returning to professional big time wrestling some few weeks ago. Nick DiCarlo from Italy will be here as well. Body slam. Knee drop. And another body slam by Bulldog Kent. Knee drop again. Irish is out. He has to be out. Kent could finish it up anytime. Just lay across his body and get a one, two, three count. But he continually comes back with that knee drop. He's got him beat. Totally beat. Why must he insist on the continual punishment? Body slam, dead weight that he's picked up by. Now he covers him. One, two. And mercifully, it's all over. Bulldog Don Kent could have taken care of him earlier, but he chose not to. John Irish defeated by Bulldog Don Kent here on Professional Big Time Wrestling. Don't go away, fans. We have tag team action coming up next here on Pro Wrestling. for you ladies and gentlemen on professional big time wrestling introducing first from new york city weighing 250 pounds ladies and gentlemen mark lewin his tag team partner from italy weighing 233 pounds nick di carlo and their opponents ladies and gentlemen from chicago illinois weighing 305 pounds billy bird his tag team partner from Parts Unknown, 285 pounds, Garth Vader. We'll wait till they get the jackets off. The referee will give us a signal. We'll get the bell. Action underway. Let's see who goes first. It looks like it's gonna be Garth Vader against Nick DiCarlo. The bell sounds. Garth Vader is no easy customer. Nick DiCarlo will find that out very quickly. And if you cannot hear the crowd, it's go Nick, go. We got a quick count of one on Vader. From Italy, Nick DiCarlo. Now, I believe I earlier said parts unknown for Garth Vader, but he's in Paris, France. Paris, France. We just got that word. Thank you. Beautiful action by Nick DiCarlo on Garth Vader, 285-pounder from Paris. Tag is made. Here comes Mark Lewin. Oh, and he looks like he's going to enjoy himself. Mark Lewin has fun in that ring wrestling. Loves the sport. Throws him right into Big Billy Bird. Oh, I thought he was going to tumble down the steps for a moment. We've got a double teaming now on the big man, Mark Lewin. 
Billy Bird gets the tag from Vader. He'll come in now against Mark Lewin, 250 pounder from New York City. Oh, I think Mark was playing a little bit. He'd come back with a brutal punch to the chest. Hangs onto that arm and pulls up on it. Oh, that hurts the shoulder. Twists that arm, puts a foot into the kidney. Tag is made. Here comes Nick to Carlo. He puts an arm right on the elbow and shoulder area. Twists it a little bit. Punches the wrist as well. Al Thomas wants to know if Billy Bird wants to give it up. Ladies and gentlemen, we told you that the Sheik will be here in a match videotaped earlier for telecast. A wild man from Syria. Tag made quickly again. Here comes Mark Lewin. Oh, that hurt. That hurt the bicep of Billy Bird. He's in pain. He wants a tag. He wants out of there. Here comes Vader. He favors that arm as he crawls, crawls through the ropes. Side headlock by Mark Lewin on Garth Vader. That's 250 pounds Vader's picking up with a bear hug. Mark and Nick, though, they have not tagged that much. Both the pros they are tagging in and out frequently. That gives them rest. A little recuperative period. Side headlock by Nick DiCarlo on Vader. Elbow, shoulder area, into the body of Vader. Look out, beautiful move by Nick DiCarlo. Vader's got his feet outside the ropes, however, so we'll have to break it up. Tag was made, and right over to Mark Lewin. Nick DiCarlo will get out of there if he can release himself as Billy Bird was hanging onto the arm. <coughs> Punch into the midsection by Billy Bird, upset Mark Lewin. Side headlock by Nick DiCarlo. Oh, uh, the referee now is saying he did not see the tag. He wants Nick DiCarlo back out. So Mark Lewin will come in again. Tag was made, but the referee did not see it. Nice takedown by Lewin. Lewin certainly enjoys himself in the wrestling arena. In that ring. Now a tag was made again. Here comes Nick DiCarlo. Apparently the referee did see that one. It holds. Side headlock. Look out. Elbow to uh, Garth Vader. Now Vader comes in. No tag was made. He puts the boot on the back of DiCarlo. Mark Lewin comes in now. The tag was not made this time. The referee wants him out. Now a little argument between Mark Lewin and the referee. He's saying that Garth Vader didn't tag either, which was true. Full Nelson applied by Nick DiCarlo on Billy Bird, moving him ever so close to Mark Lewin. Watch for the punch. It didn't come. But Mark uh, Lewin has uh, Billy Bird's head and neck draped over that top rope. Nice curl takedown by Nick DiCarlo. 
Nick punches the referee on his way up. Whoops, excuse me, didn't mean to. Leg scissors by DiCarlo on Billy Bird. Here comes Mark Lewin. When Vader started in, so did Lewin. Knee into the body of Billy Bird. Elbow smash to the body. Billy Bird is very red about the shoulder and neck area. He has taken some punishment at the hands of Mark Lewin and Billy Bird. And Mark does it again. This time he gets him up for a nice body slam. 305 pounds he's picking up. Mark, a great weightlifter, loves lifting weight. Oh, a roll up, beautiful roll up by Nick DiCarlo. Oh, that's painful. We're gonna get a count. One, two, three. No way Billy Bird would get out of a pen like that. And that hurt the neck. Mark Lewin, Nick DiCarlo, victors over Billy Bird and Garth Vader. Most of the action going to Billy Bird. Now Mark Lewin and, and uh, Garth Vader squaring off, want a little action in that ring. And Billy Bird decides he wants to come back in for some more action. Nope, don't think so, he wanted out. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. The Great Sheik from Syria will be on next. Disbelief. The sheep being very cautious. Albert Cerro stalking the sheep. The sheep reaches out to grab him. Through his legs he goes. Albert Cerro puts a couple moves on the wild man from Syria. This is going to be some bout here. The sheep looks at the crowd. He looks at his man, Albert Cerro. Here's a man who has set attendance records all around the world, the Sheik, one of the more feared wrestlers in professional wrestling today. The Giant Killer, a man who's defeated more top stars than any other man can boast. What attendance records he set everywhere. Look at the expression on that face. The Sheik, who wants to tear El Rosero's face clean off his head, now pursues the Supermax along the ropes. He has him in the corner. Got him in a side headlock. And again. The Sheik devastates the Supermax El Bracero. El Bracero in real trouble now sails through the ropes of the hard cement floor of this arena. The referee warning the Sheik who has clearly and visually done nothing as far as the referee is concerned here in this bout, even though he has. And, well, he's broken the rules steadily. There have been several infractions, but the referee must see it to call it. And now the Sheik back pedals along the rim as he watches El Bracero on the outside. Here comes Bracero through the ropes. A well-placed knee by the wild man from Syria puts El Bracero to the floor of this arena. The wild man from Syria, the Sheik, who has the power to hypnotize himself. He has a snake that is a man-eater. You may see it sometime. He may bring it with him. He has conquered his fear of man and beast through the power of hypnotism. The wild man from Syria, the Sheik, has at his command the mystical fire, which he throws from out of nowhere. He's burned many, many an opponent, many a top star. He has the power to put himself in a trance. Truly the wild man of professional wrestling. 
And you're seeing evidence here of why, as I said earlier, Muhammad Ali would pick the Sheik to be his coach. Because, my friend, you're looking at the wildest man in professional wrestling today, bar none. El bracero has been hammered. He's on the outside of the ring. The referee in the count. The Sheik not going to give him an opportunity here to get back into the ring. Meets him on the apron. El Bracero on the outside. The Sheik on the inside. He hammers away on El Bracero. Brings him back into the ring. Over that top rope. The Sheik with a forearm smash. Puts the boost to the Supermax. The Supermax is hurt. He was on the outside. He's got him in the camel clutch. The Sheik has El Bracero in that camel clutch. And the pressure is being applied. Look at the expression on this man's face. Truly the wild man of professional wrestling, the wild man from Syria, the Sheik. And I think it's all over. The referee is trying to break this up. He's trying to stop the Sheik. This is a very dangerous hold. He can apply it too long and put the Supermax in bad trouble. It's all over. The bell sounds, it's all over. And the Sheik still hasn't had enough. He wants to give Bracero more. match. So oh, there for the match. It's scheduled for one fall as a 10 minute time limit. In the red corner from Amarillo, Texas, coming in at 247 pounds, former world's heavyweight champion, Dory Funk Jr. So, his opponent in the blue corner from Lakewood, Ohio, coming in at 229 pounds, Denny Alberts. There's the bell. This match starts. Corey Funk Jr. pulls Denny Alberts into the side. Puts it in there and brings him down. Now Dory Funk Jr. Still has to be ranked the number one contender in professional wrestling for the World's Heavyweight Championship held by Harley Race. You know, there were only two Texans to ever hold the World's Heavyweight Championship. That was Dory Funk Jr. and, of course, Terry Funk. And they both lost that belt to the same man. That's Harley Race, who holds it now. They're back into the corner. Dory Funk Jr. had to hold, but he was in behind, so he had to break, and Alberts comes backing out of there. They lock up in a referee for this an arm drag, but Story Funk Jr. down on the mat as Denny Albert out of Lakewood, Ohio. Would like to impress the friends around the world with a victory here over Dory Funk Jr., but boy, does he have his work cut out for him. Dory Funk Jr. has to be the smartest man in professional wrestling. Anytime you can hold the world's heavyweight championship for four and a half years, defend it well over a thousand times, there's no doubt about that. Boom, down goes Alberts. You can see why Dory Funk Jr. is so smart. He thinks ahead, just as Alberts had the controlling hold there. Dory Funk Jr. came up and wanted to get rid of him. Eyes for the leg, it wasn't there as Alberts pulled it out of the way. Headlock. Kenny Alberts on Dory Funk Jr. Dory Funk Jr. drops down, rolls him up, had the shoulders down for a count of one. And Denny Alberts, thinking that he was controlling the match, just about found himself defeated there as Dory Funk Jr. had those shoulders down. Two minutes gone in a match. Dory Funk Jr. picking up the leg. Across his knee, and Denny Alberts will be feeling the pain now. Dory Funk Jr. reaches down, uppercuts him with that very, very vicious uppercut that he possesses. It's scissors. Alberts in it. Denny Alberts trying to kick out. He can't go anywhere. Dory Funk Jr. has it locked on tight. Dory 
Fung Jr. And Alberts comes out of it, dies to the head of Dory Fung Jr. You know, I kind of feel like Terry does. The last time we talked to Terry, he said there's no doubt in his mind that when Dory Funk Jr. steps into the ring against Harley Race, that Dory Funk Jr. will regain the world's championship for the Funk family in the great state of Texas. Back down to the ropes. Dory Funk Jr. pulls him out. Arm is carry. Down goes Alberts. Dory goes to the arm bar. Oh, I put that into that arm by Dory Funk Jr. as Alberts is wondering what's going on. Four minutes going in the match. You can see Dory Funk Jr. pulling that arm up and up. Now he steps over. Drops it from an arm drag, brings Alberts with him. Alberts will not concede as the referee Ken Farmer asked him, did he want to give the fall and the match to Dory Jr.? And he said no. There's the arm bar with a twist. Uh-oh. Oh, he took him down with that leg lock. He goes on top. Just a two count, that's all. Well, my junior has him up. Ooh, I thought he was going to suplex him way up, but Elvis got in front of him, changed the leverage this time. He got him. Bouncing off the ropes, elbow smash. On top, maybe all over. There's a two count and the three. And in the time of five minutes even, Ladies and gentlemen, that was quite a bit of action you saw there with Denny Alberts and Dor Dory Funk and a great victory for Dory Funk. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have another match for you here on Professional Big Time Wrestling. Let's introduce, first of all, from Montreal, weighing 227 pounds, Pierre Lafay. And his opponent from Buzzard Creek, Oregon, weighing 280 pounds, Stan the Man Stasiak with his very vicious heart punch, the originator of the heart punch, ladies and gentlemen. You always have to be careful when this man uh, is in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we get the bell to sound. It's Stan the Man Stasiak against Pierre Lefebvre, and look out for the heart punch because you never know when it's coming. A punch right to the forehead. Pierre Lefebvre, a very capable man in that ring. But oh my goodness, you must watch out for Stan the Man Stasiak and uh, Pierre Lefebvre now, and Stan the Man on the floor. Look out, the heart punch right now is coming, and ladies and gentlemen, on the floor, on the floor is Pierre Lefebvre, the vicious heart punch on the floor, not inside the ring. Now the referee is counting. Pierre Lefebvre just has 10 count to get in there, and it'll all be over, ladies and gentlemen. Stan the Man Stasiak did not waste any time getting that heart punch getting that heart punch in and under that cage of the rib. And now he's pounding the body of Pierre Lefebvre. Pierre, a very capable opponent, certainly doesn't need the viciousness that, uh, that uh, Stan the Man Stasiak is giving to him right now. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a, get, a, get a chance to get over here and say, hey, come on, the match is over. The match is over, Stan. Stan the Man Stasiak, it's all over. That was a vicious heart punch. It's never You've got over a victory with me. Already. It's never over with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is our, only the beginning. Our, I told you I was coming here for one reason. Our time is out. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being around. with us. I'm Chuck Allen. Everybody I'll see you next week. Cheek, same time, remember that. Same station, ladies. Remember and that. Come on, we've got to get some help for Pierre Lafayette.